Previously on the Jay and Dan podcast. Mm-hmm. So uh, my oldest daughter, Sydney, if I uh, flip it on Seinfeld and she's walking through the room, she stops. She uh, And how old is she now? Is engaged with Seinfeld. Not engaged to Jerry Seinfeld. She's Sun- engaged to Jerry <laughs> Seinfeld. Well, in engaged. the past, he did like the younger ladies. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that I make it through this podcast because uh, I had a lot of chili before the show. Mm-hmm. We just leave our microphones up while you're doing a highlight pack and I'll be commenting while in the can. And you can hear the trickle. Or the kerplop. Mm-hmm. I'm not even like looking in the stalls because I don't know what is wrong in people's diets, <laughs> how they sit on the toilet, but it's it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. In the entrance to our studio, there is a box of bolts. It's been there for 14 years. Mm-hmm. What do you have against <laughs> bolts? Bolts keep this country together. Mm-hmm. You may know me. <laughs> I don't know who you are. Identify yourself in the gazebo. This is Dan O'Toole. You're listening to the Jay and Dan Podcast. Revolver. Boom, boom, now. Dance. Dance. Uh, Stop is playing that song because I played it a bunch in the vehicle uh, this past weekend. We'll get into that. And then I did it again. In the morning on the way to the airport. Glad I wasn't in that. <laughs> <laughs> and Stoff started like, oh, okay, okay, I got it now. Uh, you, to- you were playing some great, you had some great tunes. <laughs> then you, you, that one was consensus no. No, that's You a didn't want to give up tune. on it. You, you didn't want to give up. That's DJ Mistake 101. <laughs> you, you had to, when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, what is she saying? She says, Spotlight, Moonlight, the original versions by Extination. Extination? Tentacion, I believe is how you pronounce that. (laughs) True story. And he's he's no longer with us. Like, he was like a kid. He got murdered. Oh, I'm sorry. Hmm. I got very dark. So the, the X's are silent at the start of his name? I think it's triple X tentacion. <coughs> and I said it was extension. <laughs> I just thought it was extension originally. Okay, so. Either uh, way, pick it up at your local record store. Yeah. Hey, it's uh, October uh, 7th. Yes, yes, it is. You know what arrived today? You guys will like this. I bought uh, your... one port- portable charger. Mm hmm. And it arrived today just in time because I lost two phone chargers over the weekend. Yes, you did. Both forgot at theaters, so someone in Calgary has a, a free phone charger. Someone in Edmonton has a free phone charger. Well, they were, yeah, theaters we performed at, and I use the word performed loosely. <laughs> um, how many chargers do you think get left behind in those theaters that bands and, and comedians perform at? Here's the thing I don't get, and I've done this before and others probably have. If I forget my charger and I'm at a hotel, I go down and say, do you guys uh, root around in that lost and found? I'm sure there's a charger. And they're like, no, without even looking. I'm like, <laughs> you couldn't? I'm like, no, none there. I'm like, yes, there are. There are at least eight chargers a wait, day wait. left behind in a hotel. I don't, I don't understand. Take me back here. You check out of the hotel. No, I, when you, I, if you I leave forget the hotel. It, no, if I'm in the hotel and I forget my charger, I go down to the front desk and say, hey, can you... Uh, can you lend me a charger? Why don't you just go back up to your room and get it? No, if I forget to bring my charger oh, on a trip. Oh, if you forget to bring it to a hotel. Got mm-hmm. it. Okay, I thought you left it up in your room. Because minimum eight a day get left behind when people check out. Minimum. Yeah, a lot of chargers definitely get left behind. No doubt about that. But yeah, they can't do that because what if the person comes back for it? And they know it's their charger. <laughs> Maybe they got a little sticker on it or something. Yeah. Yeah, you can't do that. Wow, what a weekend we had. What a weekend it was. Woo! Boy, it was so much fun in Alberta. Alberta was great. The yeah, weather we, was beautiful. We were in Calgary on Friday night at the Bella Concert Hall. It right. was stunning. Beautiful theater, only four years old. Still had a new theater smell. Yes, uh, so different. Such a contrast than, say, the Vogue Theater, which is also beautiful, but decidedly older <laughs> and not renovated since the <laughs> previous previous century. Not the previous century, the previous, previous century. <laughs> it was beautiful. Uh, the Bella yeah. was beautiful right on Mount Royal College campus. Sorry, mm-hmm. Mount Royal University. I made that mistake a couple of times. I stage. never knew it was a university now until you told me. Well, I 
I made the joke that it wasn't really a university. It went over really well, actually. No, we it, the crowd was absolutely amazing on uh, on Friday, and starting off with um, uh, Kevin Stobo, who's our our opener. So we've been talking a lot about our openers, and uh, you know we had some interesting ones in Vancouver and Victoria. Kevin, just your uh, your classic old school comedian i thought he did a great job yeah he warmed them up good so they the warm up back they come on they they get the belly uh, laughing there and then because it's theater rules if a, a show's a certain amount of time they need an intermission so right after the warm up act everyone goes to the lobby and every theater we've gone to we've gone to four now every one of them says you got some trackers they do they say it like that you got some trackers well, I heard someone remarked that they were cleaning up the theater um, after the show on Friday night, and you could hear them say, oh, my God, there's a lot of empties. Yeah. I, we have sold out of beer <laughs> at every single show. We've, <laughs> we've sold the venue out of beer so that, at every single show. So, stands to reason, Winnipeg, Saskatoon, and Regina, you got some drinking to do. So, Get Coors ready. Light, hop back on board the uh, Jan Dan podcast. Get in there. So... Friday night, fantastic show. Had some wonderful guests. We had a, a fantastic hotel. Um, our hotels seem to match the venues. Oh yeah, that's true. That staff we pointed that out. That's a very good point. Very interesting. Yeah, we had uh, we were at the beautiful Le Germain Hotel in, uh, in downtown Calgary, right across from the tower. Interesting how the tower doesn't seem that tall anymore. No, everything's growing up around it. And you guys, I still never saw it. I guess I didn't really look for it, but there was a doggy hotel right yeah. there. Yeah, what was it called again, Stuff? Uh, the Pet... Petropolitan, I believe? The Petropolitan, Petropolitan. Yeah. that's right. Yeah, a very fancy-looking pet hotel directly across from our actual hotel with humans. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird. Uh, show was great. And then we, we came back afterward. We stopped at Charcut. Uh, for some poutine, and then we headed out to what was it called? The the craft craft craft. craft. Yeah. craft. Yes, wild. It was hopping. And who did we run into? Our colleague Natasha Stanishevsky, who told us that she was at Craft with some girlfriends for a girls' weekend, and could we come over to Craft and drink with her? And we said yes, and we all hopped in Ubers and we walked over and we made our way to Craft and we got there, and she immediately left. <laughs> That's right. Approximately three minutes after we got there, she's like, "Okay, great seeing you guys. We're going to another bar." <laughs> like, what? She, okay. she, they wanted to go do dancing. She immediately do dancing. left. Do you she, go do dancing or you go dancing? Guys, <laughs> we're going to go do dancing. Do you want to come? We just got here. We want to do dancing. They went to margaritas or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Margarita palm trees and or something. We are old. We got to, we already did one location change. Oh, yeah. We weren't doing another. No, no. I, I, uh, I only do one location change per night. That's, right. That's maximum. Usually I don't want to do any location changes, which when we got to Edmonton, we managed to achieve that because we stayed in the new hotel. We yeah, stayed. we did, as Stoff pointed out, we did in-hotel bar hopping. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. It was like being in Vegas. It was great. And new hotel in Edmonton, the new JW Marriott, right across from Rogers Place. Dan, that was the first time you'd seen... The arena in person, the new arena in Edmonton. Yeah, we you turned a corner. We turned a corner. I'm like, holy crap, it's jaw-dropping. It's like a spaceship. It was a cool turn because we turned right on to the street that the arena's on. And you just, boom, it was right there. And uh, and then there's a little pedway connecting the, the new hotel. Beautiful new hotel. Mm -hmm. Like spanking new. Uh, the Alchemy Bar on the fifth floor behind the bookcase. Yeah, you got to go behind the bookcase. It's hidden. It's a hidden bar. Just opened a couple of days ago. We went there. Uh Big shout out to everyone there, especially Lauren, who really treated us great, made sure we were super comfortable. So just wanted to give a shout out to Lauren. But um, yeah, E-Town, fun being back in E-Town. Great mm -hmm. crowd again, back on the University of Alberta campus. Where and then I spent after two that, glorious years wasting my parents' money. Just wait, after that the rooftop bar, we went down, or it wasn't even a rooftop, it was like fifth floor. Uh, we go down to the lobby, and right after an Oiler game, that place is a pumping. It was. It's going to be pumping all season long. The problem is, though... Pumping. Again, have to do with the age. Pumping. You have to, you have to talk really loud to be heard. Yeah, but that's every bar now, isn't it? I mean, that's always been every bar. Yeah, I had enough now, of that. Now, forever. 
I had enough of that, so I just did that. I'm just going to relieve myself. You were gone. Irish exit. Well, I mean, to be honest, we were among the very last people at that bar. Yeah. You stuck it up pretty late. I did. Late to like two. Um, no, it was, it was, a, it was cool to, to get to Empton. And um, I just want to say something very quickly about Calgary, though. Uh-oh. Well, no, in a positive way. Oh, okay. There's this beautiful new library oh, that you God. saw. Oh, my God. Stunning. And this beautiful um, theater that we performed at. Again, I used to perform. I don't know what else to say. And, of course, there's an arena deal, Dan. Like, they've got a deal to build an arena for the Flames. Okay. This is the thing that I was talking to a bunch of people in Calgary about. They can't build a conventional arena, right? It can't even... Now, Edmonton's arena is beautiful and stunning and architecturally cool. It's got to be even way more out there than that. (laughs) Because they had the Saddle Dome for years. A f***ing arena that looks like a saddle. Right? Yep. They've got to do a cowboy hat or a boot or a spur or a belt buckle a or horse? something or a horse's head. Imagine you pull into Calgary going downtown, giant horse's head on the horizon, right? That's where the flames play. In Calgary, driving downtown, there's a massive human head in front of one of the new buildings. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, then you get a horse head, a human head. It's not Cowtown anymore. It'll be Headtown. Yeah, but you got to do something. I, Im- I implore Calgarians to call your local politician and insist that they design some crazy as design for this new arena because that's what that city deserves. So I was talking to a a Flames fan who'd been to an Oilers game at the new rink. He said, you know what, uh, you know what's the problem with those new rinks? He says, you're too far from the ice. Because he said, Saddle Dome, your lower bowl, at some parts, you're like 14 rows. That's as deep as it goes. Meanwhile, at the new arenas, I think it goes like 30 to 40 rows up. I I mean, I don't know what he's... He's got to understand that's how the world works now. (laughs) I know. It's like saying, you know what? I really like horse and buggies. (laughs) These cars are... Oh, I... It was a good... It was a really good time. Um, I just got to point out I'm struggling over here. uh, I think the three of us... One thing we realized... Like, we don't eat on these trips. <laughs> we fly up. We, we do our show, our television program, on Thursday evening. Very late. Get home, one thirty two in the morning. Get up. Fly to Edmonton. Go right to the venue. Sound check. Flew to Calgary. Or flew to Calgary. Right to the venue. Sound check. Like, we literally throw our luggage in the room. And, and just go. And it's sound check. And it's the meet and greet. Meet and greet was so fun. So many nice people. Thank you for coming out to that. And, but it's just nonstop. And then we go out after. Yeah, it's just nonstop. So by the time uh, I got back yesterday, we did our other program on Sunday night, I basically spent the entire day Monday pooping my pants. Yeah, because you eat road food. The pizza we had in Calgary, I don't know what company it is, but it's they best, should not have in business. It's best if we don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> It wasn't Pizza 73. I was excited about getting some pizza So, so we get there. We're starving. So there's like... We get bags of old Dutch chips, so we eat those with, yeah. with dip. Then we'll have a glass of wine. Then we have pizza. And then the next day we yeah, get up bad. and it's a bad eat combo. airport food. And then we <laughs> eat uh, we eat uh, delivered sushi while we're in Calgary. Now, that was nice in Edmonton. We got that sushi. That was a that was a, right stuff. That was a palate cleanser. Cause yeah, that, that was a good call. That was an excellent call, actually. But my like I had a nice, uh, healthy smoothie before this. And my stomach doesn't know what's going on. They're like, yeah, what is this? It's not buying what you're selling. Yeah, so they're having a fight in there right Ooh, now. Ooh, toolsy. They're like, the I road know. food's like, we want to stay. No good. Yeah. Get back on the road. You love it out there. <laughs> okay. Don't, don't stay home, you Can we talk about what happened on our flight home yesterday? Absolutely. Yes. Th- we have breaking news. Let's do it. Uh, Stoff? Okay, first yeah. off. So we were on a, a two, three, two plane. So that's two seats, and then you got an aisle, and you got uh, three or four seats in the middle, and you got two. So it was a, it was a bigger plane. Um, lots of room. There was empty seats and stuff. So we're about to take off. We're like, well, we're sitting here forever. And all of a sudden, this, this older woman comes, sits down in front of us. She tells the, uh, the lady next door, I'm eavesdropping. She's like, yeah, I think uh, my seatmate had uh, a little too much to drink. And then all of a sudden, my phone blows up with Stoff, who's up at the front of the plane, uh, witnessing what? Well, basically, the lady, they moved um, 
I'm not really sure what transpired initially, but uh, I remember this gentleman behind me yelling for one of the uh, flight attendants. And then he said that he wanted to be moved because he was offended that the lady next to him asked him to stop touching her. <laughs> he was offended yes. that she didn't want to be so touched. She, she didn't actually call anyone. He called attention to himself. Uh, you know, the flight attendant acted, acted very smoothly, uh, moved the lady to the back of the plane right in front of you. And then we sat there for a while. And I imagine I, they probably called the police at that point. But, yeah, there was almost a couple of incidents with this yeah, guy, with a couple other Yeah, didn't one guy uh, yell something at him? Yeah, one guy finally told him to shut up because there's little kids around. Because this guy kept swearing his head off. He was just being a complete a-hole. Uh, so someone told him, shut up or you're going to make a real quick exit out of here. <laughs> and the guy literally went, okay. And you didn't hear a peep out of him. And about, I don't know, 10 minutes later, two cops came up and took him And the cop, the cop was massive. Oh, yeah. And it was like... This guy just got right up and walked off. Like, there was no problem. The look on the cop's face was like they didn't think anything was going to transpire. They were pretty confident this guy was going to just. Yeah, and and this guy was stuff. I want to say five foot four. Yeah, he was not a big guy. No, not at all. He was a little guy. But he he was hammered. And I was talking to someone ahead of me after, and they were saying that they were uh, at the bar before the flight and they saw him there and he was pounding them back. (laughs) So, no doubt. Not a big no surprise, doubt. but yeah. The oh, best man. part was he was, so you were in front of me. I was right behind him, and I heard none of this because I had my headphones in the whole <laughs> right. time. The guy beside me was like, did you hear that? They were yelling at him. I was like, I was listening to Bonnie Fair. <laughs> no, I can't. Meanwhile, going on? I'm like 20 rows behind you guys. I'm like, what's going on up there? I want to see. <laughs> I thought it was behind me when you, we were texting. I know, because I'm looking you were back looking at back at me, and I'm like, what are you looking at? It's up there. <laughs> I was looking back at you. I thought it was behind me. Oh, that was fun. Um, you know what else was weird? Hmm. And we got to discuss this. Both Q&A sessions at our live podcasts. Were very very strange. They're always strange because people are bombed. <laughs> like we, so just a heads up: if you're coming to the live shows, it's almost like the director's cut. We do a Q and A at the end, and sometimes we like we went over like two hours the other night. We both shows we did two hours. Yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, so it's you two can, hours of solid entertainment. When the Q and A starts, feel free to leave because it gets kind of weird. People get up there, and then but now they're going to want to stay. That's yeah. like saying. <laughs> There's going to be some extra scenes in the end credits, but if you don't want to see them, go away. I know. That's why, that's why I said that. It's like, uh, ooh, viewer discretion advised. Oh, okay. I think I'll stick around for this. Like the first, so throughout the Calgary show, there was this woman who kept yelling things out. She was clearly bombed. But it wasn't bad. It was no, like, funny to it's me. It's all fun. I loved it. And so anyway, we say, all right, it's time for the Q&A. Well, she makes a beeline for the stage and right in front of us, walks right across front of us to the microphone. We have a microphone on stage. We have everyone come up to the stage and ask the questions. And she did a Would You Rather. And one of the sections of the Would You Rather was if you and I would. Okay. I thought we have to cut that out. Well, no. <laughs> we'll just bleep the. Okay. Yeah. Part. <laughs> but I was like, wow, that's where we're starting? Yeah, that's where we started. That's the bar that mm-hmm. this woman is setting? I mean, it was, and of course we answered yes, but beside that, like, there was just crazy question after crazy question, and you're right, because everyone is bombed. I personally think it's really fun. I thought the next night was weirder. The next night was weirder. At one point, a guy said that his dad met me on a beach in Kelowna, and he was back at the Airbnb in Kelowna, and could we recreate that whole scene? I left the stage at that point. On stage, (laughs) like we're recreating scenes from his life. And I'm like, what is going on here? This is like improv. It's like theater school. Yeah. Um, we got several tweets from Edmontonians who attended the show apologizing <laughs> for the quality of questions that we got in that Q&A. And then you always, after every Q&A, some people are like, yeah, maybe don't do the Q&A. <laughs> Maybe don't do that. And so we also got the Edmonton crowd because the Oilers were having their home opener the same night. So we had a gentleman. Uh, what was his name again in the front row? Oh, Michael. Michael. Michael yes. was giving us updates throughout the That's game. That's right. Then everyone started to join in. So have, have you ever heard like 500 people trying to yell the score at the same time? You can't hear it. It was really funny, though. Yeah. Like, and the Oilers won that night. It was, yeah, uh, big it was six a goal five. fest. Yeah. yeah, it was tons of goals. and uh, Yeah, everyone was feeling good. You can tell that town just... 
They just want that team to just can be competitive. It's tired, yes. sad, losing. Um, I saw two uh, huge names. One on the way to uh, Calgary when we left Toronto. Jim Cuddy was at the airport. What a Canadian legend. Lead singer of Blue Rodeo. What did he say to you? Um, so he was checking his guitar and stuff. It was uh, the uh, the odd shapes items, like the, the uh, oversized luggage. Because I was p- checking a box from our office. We had to bring a box with us. Not only did you check the box... You put all your personal items in that box. You had nothing on the plane. Right. If that box had exploded, all your whole life would have exploded onto that uh, luggage thing. You know thing. what? It is so liberating not having carry-on. I was just like, eh, I can get on the plane whenever the f*** I want. It is cool. Traveling light is the way to go. So, yeah, and I actually had to hand you the roll of tape because I'm like, well, once I tape the box, I'm not carrying around a roll of tape. I think I left it in the hotel. Oh, okay. Uh, so saw him there. <laughs> And then in my hotel in Calgary, I hop on. I was going down to have a morning jog. And uh, who's in the elevator with his wife and child? Dion Phaneuf. Oh, boy. Dion. So he, he always has this look. So if you ask him a question when you're interviewing him, he's looking at you like... He thinks about it. Yeah. I think he really thinks so about it. So I got it. on the elevator. He looks at me with that look. He's like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, uh, hey, I said your name on our show the other night. You were the last Leaves captain. He's like... Okay, uh, <laughs> then they just they just left because they were getting off and I was getting on, but uh, yeah, that was my Dion Phaneuf story. Was that the only conversation you had? Like it was just really quick. Well, the elevator was we had to couldn't just stand there with the elevator open. Did you think of saying, "Hey, what are you guys doing now?" Didn't have time. Damn, would have been cool to just follow them, even if they didn't want you to follow them. Follow them to their room. Follow the leader, 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 follow the leader. It was a great weekend, all in all. Just want to thank everybody from Alberta who came out mm-hmm. to both shows. Sincerely appreciate it. Air but Canada Rouge, the seats weren't bad this time. Got to go bulk, kid. If, if I could just make a quick reminder. Okay. Very quickly. Folks, the Saskatoon show on November the 1st, that's sold out. I'm sorry. It's sold out. But here's the good news. The Winnipeg show on November the 2nd at the Garrick, close to sold out, not sold out yet. Okay. You can still get tickets to that one. Our Winnipeg fans, man, I love the city so much. I want that show to be rocking. Let's sell that one out. And then I believe on the 15th of November, we're in Regina. I got to call out Regina a little bit, Dan. Mm -hmm. Tickets are selling a little slower than I'd like in a town that we have given a lot of love to. Yeah. A lot of love, too. Come on, Regina. Come on, Regina. Come on out. You know it's going to be a good time. You guys can ask us anything in that Q&A. And I mean anything. (laughs) And we haven't talked about the special guests that we had at our two podcasts. Oh, my goodness. All of them. The house comes down. It's... Like, they have... It's amazing. We've got, like, movie theater screens behind us. We play clips and stuff. We have guests on. It's... It's quite an experience, and especially when some of these people's faces pop up there, and it's like, ah! Yeah, and the reaction is so great, because everyone who's coming out to these shows is a fan of the podcast. They know who we're bringing on, and they're so excited to see them. I forgot to read this message on stage. Um, oh. Excuse me, everyone. Do we have time? I had another Olga on my hands. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So and this then we'll call uh, our first guest. So this person, um, they send me a heart with like a piece from my story. It was uh, from the, it said, thank you for the last night, Calgary, Edmonton, let's try and top it tonight. So they send me a, uh, a message with a heart. And I say, thank you. And then the person responds, her name's Elvin. She says, hello. I said, hi, how are you? Anyway. It, it's a boy's name. Yeah. Um, she said, I'm single now. I said, but you're in France. She said, I had a disappointment in love with my ex-boyfriend. I live in Montpellier in France. I love your scram. I am now here with my friendship. With embarrassment, I apologize a lot. Okay, so I'm like, okay. Oh, boy, Dan. I know. So eventually I said, okay, you are not a real person. Uh, I said, how did you find me? So I said, send me a pic of you giving the peace sign to prove you're real. Her response, you are sick. So doubt me. Why are you talking with me? You have to tell your parents to make this sign. You must unsubscribe on May page. I'm not subscribed to her page. I said, I have no idea what that even means. And she responded with, good night. 
And that was it. Yes. Wow. You That's are sad. sick. You have to tell your parents. <laughs> Unsubscribe to my page. Oh, so she thought you had some, like, were following her on I'm Instagram. I'm not. No. And I immediately knew this person. Can it, you tell us who it is? Maybe some of our listeners would like to follow her. Actually, maybe not. Yeah, no. She's no. got four posts um, following 800 people, 36 followers. I looked them all. They were all, like, middle-aged guys. Yeah. <laughs> So she's got her sweet spot. And one of those middle-aged guys following her is our first guest on the show. He is a, a longtime friend of mine and a longtime friend of life. <laughs> He's a special boy that I attended Ryerson University with from 1994 to 1998 from Calgary, Alberta. My good friend Alan Thrush, who attended the Friday night show at the Bella Concert Hall. Alan, how are you? I'm good, guys. How are you doing? Good. Had you ever heard the podcast before you attended it live? Uh, I'm going to say on and off. I, uh, I followed you guys when you were down in the States just because I was kind of interested in what uh, in what Jay was up to. But I got to say, I, I, uh, I'm not a regular follower. I try not to I try not to follow Jay too closely. Yeah. It's, why, no. why is that? Why? <laughs> because we've been friends for t- 25 <laughs> years. I know, I know. Well, you, you've got such a you got such a large following, and I feel like my wife uh, has known you as long as I have, and she's got a bit of influence on me. And all the all the stories that I know, she knows, and so she kind of you know I got to keep my distance. Well, this uh, we need to explain this briefly. Yeah, when can you we, please dive deep? When we were going to Ryerson, <laughs> Alan was dating yep. his now wife, and uh, it was a long distance relationship. So so we were going to to college in Toronto, and Alan's from Calgary, and and. Dodie's now wife was living back in Calgary, and mm-hmm. Alan had a literal shrine to her on his wall, a headshots, <laughs> many, many photos uh, placed True. over his bed. Uh, I think we all know what he was doing at night as he looked up at that <laughs> montage. Now, yeah. um, for various reasons, she did not feel that she could trust me, and therefore she did not like the fact that you were hanging around with her. Aha, smart woman. Yeah, no, it's true. And actually, your uh, your buddy Trevor was at the uh, the show on Friday too, and I saw a lot of similarities with the way his wife interacted with you as my wife does with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, there's a lot of she like you kind of stand back and you know I, I think I think she likes you, but there's a lot of a lot of trepidation because I think she knows just as much as Dodie knows. So. so I picture now, so when Jay comes to hang out with you guys, is it like the Fonz coming with a jean jacket? Hey, who wants to party? Oh, yeah. Remember remember the, the scene from, uh, uh, what was the Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire in it when he turns into, like, cool Spider-Man? Yeah. Yes. And he's, like, walking down the street and, like, pointing guns at people. And <laughs> that's kind of what Jay's like when he walks through the door. He's like, <laughs> the kids actually call me cool dad because sometimes I'll start into the kitchen like that. <laughs> so, um, I guess my question is: You had had you ever been to a, a live podcast before? No, not at all. And actually, as I was saying, I, uh, you know, we were heading down. I, I thanks thanks to you, we we got some tickets to the show, and I, I asked Dodie if she wanted to tag along. She said sure because she hadn't seen you in a while. And but she said after the show that she was expecting because we were going to Mount Royal, a beautiful place by the way, and uh, but she was expecting like you and Dan and maybe a couple of your friends in some weird basement suite <laughs> with a microphone and <laughs> and it turned out yeah no it was it was an awesome show it was a beautiful facility you guys were kind of funny front to back so yeah we had a really good time now um just to maybe allow people to understand why Dodie didn't want you to hang around with me maybe you could give yeah. a couple examples of, of of why that might be Oh God! Where do we start? How many podcasts do you have set aside for this? We have a few. Yeah. We've got, it's an eight-parter. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, I don't know. Like it's, uh, it's hard to say. Back back in the day, like you and I met in, in first year, but we didn't really. I mean, we hung out in first year, but we lived together in second year. Yes. Right? Yes. And that was uh, old old Pittman Hall at, at Rye High. And it was and us had, and uh, three ballet dancers. Three male or female three women. female ballet yeah. Oh, dancers. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So just yeah. a and lot I, of, of ballet. There was a lot of ballet. 
hundred percent ballet all the time. Yeah. But but you know there was kind of a running joke on stage on Friday that that Mount Royal you know it was a college when I was growing up and now it's a university sure. and I kept saying everyone knows it's not a real university <laughs> it's yeah, just a college true. but that's what people say about Ryerson that's why I can make that joke well yeah so to this day we still call it Rye High yeah Rye yeah. High or De Ryerson yeah. or yeah or 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 guaranteed B we called it <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Alan, it was a pleasure uh, talking with you and, and recollecting maybe some of the finer oh. moments of our lives. It's true. There's so many more. If you guys are ever, if you're ever uh, hard up for material, you know what to call. Well, we yes. can't wait to see you in Regina because uh, ticket sales have to pick up. Oh, well, let me, let me just say, anyone who's thinking of going to Regina, it, it was a blast. My, uh, my wife doesn't care for Jay. She's never <laughs> listened to the podcast. <laughs> And uh, she came in, she came away saying it was a really great night. So. Okay, see, so yeah, win them over one yeah. at a time. It's a good sign. And, and yeah, Trevor, who you mentioned, his wife, same thing, yeah. had never heard the pod, uh, didn't know what she was getting into, had a really great night. So there you go, folks. You yeah. don't even have to listen to the podcast to come out and watch the no. podcast. And yeah. they both know your backstory. I just just quickly, by the way, yeah. When uh, Jay called to ask me if uh, I wanted to be on the podcast, he literally said, you know, nothing's off limits, nothing. <laughs> and I, I quickly brought up two stories, and he said, okay, maybe not nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not so, <clears throat> Maybe not nothing. So if anyone's ever in Calgary, look me up, and we'll, we'll go have a beer, and I can, I can open the box. We'll get you. you on stage at the X-rated podcast. Yeah, yeah, we'll get you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, if we, ever, uh, if we ever go off the grid with the podcast, then we can. Yeah. We can delve into yep. those ones. Uh, Alan, thank I'm you so ready. much, my friend. Yep. Have Don't a, worry, guys. Have a great Thanks, night. Buddy. Forgot to read this one. Uh, I got a direct message from someone before the show in Edmonton because I sent out a picture. It said the calm before the shit storm, which is the picture of the empty uh, uh, Meyer Horowitz Theater. Another beautiful theater. It was really. It, the Tragically so Hip cool have played there right. a million times, haven't they? Yeah, the Hip used to play there uh, about once a year. Wow. Right in the Students' Union building. At the uh, U of A campus, um, spent a lot of time there, uh, and too much time. That's why I barely got through the two years I went there. This this message just makes me laugh. I don't know why. So she uh, she responds to the picture of the theater. Boyfriend and I just filled up an Olive Garden. See you soon. I like that. Uh. Found that hubris. Olive Gardens are not in Ontario, but I saw a few, I think, in Calgary. No, or did I see one in Edmonton? We drove by one in Edmonton. Yeah, I think you saw one in Edmonton. I still don't understand why they're not, like, they're still thriving in the States everywhere. They're still packing because, them in. Not free salad and breadsticks, but I think it's Eastside Mario's. Is I think what happened when they came here, here right? they came to Ontario and they expanded too quick, and some locations would have like 400 employees. Right. Like, they just l- rolled it out wrong. So that's why. But I think they had those, that many because you've been to busy Olive Gardens, right? And it's a gong show. Like, you need that many people. Maybe they just... Th- I just think in Ontario, you got the East Side Mario's. And I think that kind of serve That fills that void. That free salad and breadsticks void. That- it fills the... Hey, bada boom, bada bing! I remember, speaking of Ryerson, I remember going to Ryerson in those commercials for East Side Mario's. East Side Mario's, East Side Mario's, a eh, bada boom, bada bing. All the Italian guys at school were always like, I'm offended by it. <laughs> I would be too. It's offensive to me. They would always say that. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I, I grew up in an Italian neighborhood and I heard the same thing. Yeah. It's, it's a bit offensive. I think they straightened it out. Yeah, they don't do that anymore. Uh, our next guest came to the Edmonton live podcast. And he was a special guest of ours at that podcast. And we were so thrilled to have him there. Uh, he is one of the survivors of the Humboldt bus crash, a uh, former member of the Humboldt Broncos. Uh, went to play for the Broncos the year after the crash. Uh, one of three players who came back to play. And now he attends Nate, the Northern Alberta Institute of Technology in Edmonton, because, uh, well, I thought he wanted to be a broadcaster. But he might have other plans. Tyler Smith, how are you, my friend? Jay and Dan, it's great to hear from you. How are we doing? Oh. Long time no see. It was no f- kidding. You guys got home <laughs> safe right here? Yeah, we, we did. did. We yeah, did. We, uh, we had a fun night. You hung out with us backstage. And um, what were your impressions of the evening? 
Impressions were good. I uh, didn't know what to expect. I mean, uh, first kind of podcast tour that I've attended, but overall, it was a blast. We had some had some laughs before the show, and uh, they continued throughout the night. What a what a night! Now, when you were sitting in the crowd, could you sense the alcohol level in every human was rising <laughs> rapidly around you? I don't think there was a, an individual in that room that uh, would have blown under zero point zero eight. <laughs> Uh, that's Alberta for you. Yeah. And overall, um, I think the the moment of the evening that everybody sort of still bewildered by was the question and answer period. And uh, <laughs> just, do you have any any takeaways from that particular uh, time, or had you already checked out by that point? <laughs> well, uh, I kind of already checked out, but uh, I mean, what can you even say? <laughs> it's just. Uh, Good for the people that went up there and asked those uh, bizarre questions. Cause <laughs> I wouldn't have had the nuts to do it. <laughs> yeah, well, throughout the night, it was... Uh, so this... It's happened at all the venues. Well, not the vomiting. It's, uh, vomiting's only happened at one venue so far. And that was Victoria. <laughs> Way to go, Victoria. Yeah. Um, but uh, throughout the show, someone always tries to carry on a conversation with us from, like, the back of the house. They're like, Hey, I saw one of those! We were like, what is happening? And then someone else will join in, and then they're trying... So it's, it's a lot of that a lot of herding cats and just saying okay well i guess that's maybe why we have the q a so you can actually have your your question heard yeah yeah right i think it's yeah and that's why we bring people on stage because i, I like to, to see the person asking the question um and i thought that maybe it would, it would encourage people who were um confident and and it, what it turned out was it encouraged people who were drunk and encouraged those people. A little bit of liquid courage, AJ. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't think that whole thing. You know, much as I didn't think through the idea that having a friend of mine uh, put a lipstick on my ass to win a free year of cable uh, at university, I didn't think that through. I didn't think that one through either. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's all right. Yeah, see, these are all life lessons. There's a lot. Actually, there is a lot to learn at each podcast because it's almost a, an on-stage therapy session for both of us. We uh, reveal yeah. a lot of things about ourselves, and a lot, of us, uh, a lot of us view it, or a lot of people view it, and they say, okay, there's what you don't do, and then they follow the, 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 right, the correct path that we didn't take. <laughs> Um, Tyler, tell me, um, so you're, you're at Nate and, uh, you know, obviously you went through such a a significant, uh, tragic event in your life, but you're really doing amazingly well now and you're, and you're, you're at Nate and you're in the broadcasting program, but you, you're not exactly sure where you want to take it. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So I'm just doing the first year of school at Nate now, uh, broadcast program has been awesome so far, but uh, I've definitely developed a passion for pu- public speaking and kind of getting my message out there and hopefully to inspire some people. So uh, I'm going to run with that a little bit. Uh, I'm going to focus on my schooling for now, get that done, and then uh, kind of go from there. See, when uh, Jay said you were thinking of, a, instead of being on air, and he alluded to, well, you just revealed you want to do public speaking, I always thinking, like, maybe you want to aspire to be producer Tim and you could take over... Uh, that Ooh. role on our show. Yeah. That's a, always an option, actually. If producer Tim does anything to uh, get himself fired, let no, me know. He, every day uh, he does. Yeah, I was every say, day he, he does. He, if, if we could get rid of him now, we would. And we're just <laughs> waiting for that qualified person to come along. And I feel like that might be you. All right. Well, you know what? I'm here. You have, uh, you have my contact information. Uh, you, <laughs> you know you can rely on me. And uh, I'd love to take over producer Tim. He wouldn't mind, right? Oh, no. He would He'd be happy to go at this point. So uh, you've, you're already doing public speaking. Um, uh, you know, how much public speaking are you doing? How, how much are you getting out, of there, out there in, in front of the people and, and uh, delivering your message, so to speak? Uh, I haven't done a crazy amount of public speaking. Uh, I've done probably about four or five uh, speeches. But uh, after my article kind of went out there and went to, blew up a little more than I expected, um, I kind of hope to aspire from that and and run with that a little and and continue to inspire from that article. But uh, I'm definitely not going to push it. Like I said, I'd love to focus on school and get that done first and then kind of gain those traits of public speaking and then then hopefully uh, continue to pursue it. In broadcasting school, what have you learned so far? Because in my school, I've said this before, the biggest thing I learned was be on time 
And um, it's pronounced Moscow, not Moscow. Those are the only two things I learned. Well, that's the only okay, thing, well, two things you remember. But you might have learned. <laughs> you might have learned other things and forgotten. Almost immediately forgotten. <laughs> How about you, Ty? What are you What are you learning that you remember? Uh, what I remember so far. Uh, it's been a short period of time. Uh, breathe with your diaphragm. Oh, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Big one. Yeah. Uh, and uh, try and get as many words as you can in one breath. And then uh, a couple little CP style book things, and that's about it. Okay, so yeah, the diaphragm one, yeah, yeah that's I a learned good, that. That's a good piece of advice. Okay. Ringing a bell. Can you call me once a month while you're in school and just kind of recap? I I jokingly say that to my daughters, but I really am getting dumb. So they come home, I'm like, so what'd you learn today? And then they tell me, I'm like, no, really, what'd you learn? Yeah. What yeah. did they tell you? <laughs> I need to know. I need knowledge. <laughs> yes, exactly. All the knowledge has left my brain. I yeah, can, we can do a little mini podcast. I'll, okay. uh, I'll call you once a month, and then uh, and we'll set some up, and hopefully, I'll write enough notes to to get <laughs> yes. some knowledge into your brain. I, I feel it. like we've we've got a bunch of different spinoff podcasts that are emerging from <laughs> this one podcast. It's the X-rated one, where Alan will tell the stories that I didn't want him to tell, and then it's the uh, the one where where Ty educates Stan and makes him not dumb. <laughs> Yeah, I like it. I'm in for it. Ty, uh, all the best to you, my friend, and uh, I hope we get to hang out again next time we're in Edmonton. It was it was great. And next time, have some sushi. You didn't have any sushi. True, I know. I need to be better on that one. (laughs) That room must just stink now. Hopefully, someone cleaned that up because that sushi is still in that room. That's going to start to fester. It's it's probably still there. (laughs) The double shower room. (laughs) That's right. The two showers. A lot of stuff is going on in those showers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. All right, guys. Take care. Yeah, take we'll care, Ty. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah, hey. I was thinking back to what Alan said. I just want to make it clear. I didn't spend my whole university career dropping my pants and exposing my ass. I mean, I know it might come across that way just based on that one week in second year. Um, but most of the time I kept my pants up. And in light of what just happened to Austin Matthews, that's a serious thing. I just want everyone to know mm-hmm. that I, uh, I, uh, I tried to be as responsible as I could. I wonder how much of this podcast is going to survive. The chopping room floor. Or the chopping room... The chopping room floor. <laughs> <laughs> the cutting room floor. Hey, I didn't... Did I tell you guys about my big win on the way to Edmonton or Calgary? Sorry, we flew to Calgary from Toronto. Here's a little tip, everyone. When an airline is coming back with the cart, and they've got their uh, snacks and their drinks and everything, Mm -hmm. and when they say the card machine's not working, they'll come back later in the flight, they don't come back. They do not come back. That's free food! That is correct. Makes sense, because how are they going to fix it on the flight, right? (laughs) They're not going to be... They don't have have the technology. I was actually afraid someone's going to be waiting at the end of the uh, (laughs) tunnel with, like, a debit machine. Hey, we need you to settle up before you leave. So next time, if that machine's broken, I'm like, I'll have one of everything, please. Because you'll be back. I know you will. So there's your little flying tip. Lights were really good, actually. They were. A shout out to all the Air Canada employees. You guys did a really good job. Again, with a drunkard on one of the flights. <laughs> you handled it beautifully, I thought. As well as you can handle that. Situation. I'm just glad we didn't take off with him on there because it only would have got worse. And oh, we yeah. would have had to turn around. Some, well, someone would have punched him. It would have happened. But an sure. incident would have made us have to land, and then we would have missed work. We, we were borderline <laughs> as it was, because this plane was delayed anyway, so we cut it pretty tight. I mean, we shouldn't be saying that. Literally, this whole podcast, it's full of things that we shouldn't have said. But I guess that's what, what our podcast is all about, isn't it? Uh, it's a safe place. Just replace a lot of with white noise. That used soothing. to be anyway. I guess it can't be <laughs> anymore. Um... No, but in all sincerity, just awesome live shows. Thank you so much. Christoph, you had never been to Edmonton or Calgary. I'd love to get your impressions of those cities. It was awesome. Um, nice cities and awesome people. Really yeah. friendly. We uh, had a great time. You know what, Christoph, is, uh, I already know one of his big regrets that he didn't get to do in Calgary was one of those people mover machines that go around the airport. He wanted to ride on that. Oh, yeah. Well, I thought yeah, you were going to mention like- the scooters. They have those like a, a mini bus system inside the actual airport. It was pretty cool. Yeah, and yes, as you mentioned, yeah, Edmonton and Calgary have these scooters that I 
talked about in uh, Detroit. They're everywhere. Yeah, the ones you just drop on the ground. But we tried to find some to, to ride home from the bar the one night, and we couldn't find any. Well, just look down. <laughs> yeah, they are ever. They're they're everywhere. I I saw one down by the river in Calgary. I'm like, well, where is that person now? Because they wrote it down here, and I don't. The only thing I don't quite understand is why. You know, you have the rideshare bike program, right? I I don't know which cities have it in our country, but I know we have it here in Toronto, and it's great. Mm-hmm. And we have one. We have racks right at the end of my street, actually, and they're always empty and during the day, and then at night they're always full. It's like they're really being used. I don't understand why the scooters don't have little a little scooter station, you know, about 20 of them all around town where you just you could pick up a scooter on one and drop it off at another. Because that's, that's why they like these better, because you don't have to find one of those areas. You just find a scooter lying on the sidewalk. <laughs> that's how, how it is. I just... What if I you had, live in some remote location like that no one will ever pick the scooter up from there? I just feel like it's it would be so much better just just get a bunch of scooter racks like get like literally 50 of them isn't it better to have them in the somewhere like that like every couple yeah, of blocks I, have one the logistics right. of it alone i would like so many problems like to but to find all yes. the scooters on the ground like and some of these cities they impound them and then the company has to come and like pay to get them out because oh. they've been lying on people's lawns it and just stuff seems and, like and I people steal them yeah I, I mean, know. it's cool. Don't get me wrong. They fly pretty good. Yeah, like, it great. looks like a lot of fun. I would want to do it. I'm just trying to figure out a better way to get those scooters at the end of the night. I got to say, this has been a really fun podcast. And it's been a really great time. I think I might have to go home. Are you that ill? I got to say, you're sweating a bit over there. It's, uh, oh. You are sweating. I've never seen you sweat like this. I'm not sweating. I'm bits, bitsy. You're a little bit bitsy. Oh, am I? Oh, I'm always got pitsies going. Do we? You, when I put a dress put, shirt on. You put deodorant on? Yep, big time. It's still. What about antiperspirant? You try that. How about that new product that with the two guys who have sweaty hands and feet? <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm that stuff about? can't be safe. That is weird. It's a cream. It's called like Sharpe or. And it Har- makes you not sweat. Yeah. Uh, so they had sweaty hands and feet. So they created a cream. I wish I could Carpe. Can you look this up, stuff, and maybe we can play it? Uh, C A R P E, and it's two young guys, and they're just nerds, and they're like, they had sweating problems. We had sweating problems on our hands and feet, and now we put on this cream, and it's fine. And you're like, yeah, just like you. I'm like, this is gonna kill all these people. Hi, I'm Casper, and I'm David, and we're the guys that decided to make Carpe. We had really sweaty hands, and it was just really awkward and embarrassing on dates, meetings, and just everyday life. So we decided to make a solution that would stop that. When we set out to create Carpe, we wanted to make something that worked great, but was also really simple to use. And we think we've done exactly that. So here's how you use Carpe. First, wash and completely dry your hands. Next, apply a small pea-sized drop to your hands. The key is that a little bit of Carpe will stop a lot of sweat. After that, rub it in, and you should feel it completely soaked in within 30 seconds. After 10 minutes, Carpe is doing its magic. If you're using Carpe to help manage chronic excessive sweating, like hyperhidrosis, the best way to do that is to apply it three times a day. For us, we found that those times are the morning, the afternoon, and one time before bed. That last one's really important because during okay, the night is when your skin sweats the least. That's Carpe right there. Okay, the fact that they said a pea size. So what happens if you, if <laughs> you squirt like a big like baseball-sized chunk of it and you're like, ah, well, that'll work. What happens? You die? Yeah, your skin will fall off. All I, your skin melts. I used to wear this deodorant um, that you'd put on. My brother put me onto it, and it stops all sweating. But you look at the ingredients, and it's like 200% zinc. Or right. not zinc or aluminum, sorry. It's 200%. Like, you're, you're going to die if you use that stuff. I think it's illegal now. But it did stop the sweating. I used a deodorant that was 100% asbestos. <laughs> It also stopped my sweating. So and can my you life. use can you use Carpe on your pits? Is that what they were talking about? The the three applications? They only say sweaty hands and feet. No, it's three times a day, I believe. Sweaty hands and feet. But Isn't yeah, it why just another you? anti can't you put antiperspirant on your hands? I guess you could, but it would be kind of messy. sticky and messy. Yeah. I, but it's a great point. Like You're right. This rubs on in thirty seconds. This rubs so on and rubs off. It's a selling point. Rub on, rub off. 
and I masturbate a lot. I'm really thinking about this whole podcast. And can we save any of it? <laughs> well, we'll have a powwow after. Can you even say that? Can we even talk about the fact that we have to talk about the podcast? And what can we talk about? Ugh. I love this ass. <laughs> <laughs> There it is. You brought it back, Stoff. Stoff, you're the best. Okay, just a reminder. (laughs) November 2nd, Winnipeg, the Garrick. Let's sell that out. November 15th. Double check that, Toolsy. Can you check the date? Friday. Is it November the 15th, a Friday? Or is it November the 14th? Yeah. November the 15th is a Friday. And we will be in Regina at the Conexus Center. And we want to sell that out, too. So let's start buying those tickets. Oh, you didn't... You don't need to use your phone. You can talk and bring that up. I know. I was just—I had to put it in there one last time. I was time. actually planning to finish <laughs> yes. it off. With uh, that, there but. it is. By the way, I just saw Natasha Stanishevsky's hosting Sports Center, so oh. she's back uh, from the Tropicana Bar where she left uh, us for. If we had a newsroom right now, would she just leave the show? Yeah, I'm out of here. Should we take a hint? Yeah, probably. Guys. Thank you very much for listening. Thanks for being podcast. awesome, Alberta. You guys were yeah. extremely great hosts. The 403780, maybe there's another area code. Not sure. Yeah. Thank you very much.